Welcome to another episode of Show and Tell Book Nook. I'm Chantel. And I'm Amber. And today we are talking about our March book club pick, which was The Catcher in the Rye. I was telling Amber, if we hadn't been doing this video, I would not have finished this book. To be completely honest and frank, which will tell you very much about how I feel about Catcher in the Rye. And I think Amber's pretty much the same. Yeah, I was lamenting reading this book to my husband and I'm like, I don't understand why classics so often are young white male narrators that I can't stand. But I was in my angst and he had to help provide context and, and reasoning because I was not enjoying <laughs> the book. A hundred percent. I do think the background of The Catcher in the Rye helps a little bit. Not a whole lot to be completely frank, but it was written by J.D. Salinger. He attended a lot of prep school, so I think he kind of wrote Holden, who's the main character, as like an echo of himself. He then attended a military academy in Pennsylvania. He served in World War II and participated in the D-Day invasion. So again, characters in the book are an echo of his personal life. He kind of just gained notoriety through short stories. And then when he published The Catcher in the Rye in 1951, it was almost an overnight success. Like, like it immediately started c catching people's attentions. And critics did have like a mixed review on it, but a lot of the audiences loved it for what it brought to the table and a lot of other novels that were published during this time didn't have the same style that we will talk about later. And it's, I think it's along those lines important to note that parts of Holden's story were originally published as serials in The New Yorker in the 40s. And so there was public thirst for more of his story. So when the book was finally published in its full form, the public already had an appetite for it, already were familiar with the characters. Basically like when authors do it on Wattpad or like Kindle Unlimited and kind of tease it and then finally like there's enough momentum that they're like, yes, we're going to publish an actual book. Very good point. All right. Um, why is this considered a classic, Amber? Okay. So I was struggling with why is this book considered a classic and it took having a conversation with my husband about it and we came to the conclusion that young audiences need a story that they can relate to. So the reason it was popular or is still popular for younger audiences is because the narrator is a 16, 17 year old boy who is exploring themes that are very common for that age group in a manner that they can relate to. The Catcher in the Rye kind of has like three main themes and it's like adolescence and like feeling alone or alienation, phoniness and being authentic. And also Holden coming to terms with like no longer being a child uh, and it's juxtaposed with his sister. One of the reasons it's endured through time is for adults to be reminded of that experience because I think so often times teachers or parents will forget what they were like as a 16 year old. Right. So I think maybe J.D. Salinger at, at, to some degree was trying to remind society as a whole what adolescence is. So I think that's one of the reasons we found him to be an annoying character is because this narration was back and forth constantly. But I think it, it fully encompassed the insecurity and the, the self-doubt that so easily creeps in. I think a stream of consciousness writing style is really tough to be able to pull off as an author without your character being annoying. So because Holden is all over the place, he also is a teenager. So because of that, he says something and then takes it back or so has to fix it. Or one of his biggest complaints throughout the entire novel is that people are fake, which is very ironic given that a lot of times two paragraphs later while he's complaining about someone for being fake, he does something very similar. And you're just like, again, the ideal, I am perfect, everyone else is flawed, which I think it is human nature in general to judge everyone else for being phony while having aspects of that in our own personalities. What are some literary devices you picked up on in this book? Unreliable narrator, 100%. It's my favorite. The entire time I was half thinking, I'm like, is this going to be like Wuthering Heights where I end up hating it as I read it, but loved it in the end or not necessarily loved it, but like still think about it? The answer is no. But he even admits that he lies all the time and he can't stop himself from lying. 
So because of that, you really can't trust anything he says throughout the entire book. I just on that note, in one of the first chapters, um, there's a discussion between Holden and one of the teachers. And he's like, what did the headmaster talk to you about in his office? And he's like life is a game and you have to play the game by the rules by society's rules life is a game and so it's that foreshadowing element that i picked up on where structures of young adult novels you usually have that b character who gives you the lesson that the main character needs to learn very good point the other thing i thought was interesting and i don't know that this necessary but it's the way in which he talks about his younger siblings. So he lost his 13 year old brother. And in telling you about that experience, he puts his younger brother on such a pedestal. He was the smartest, he was the kindest. And you see that when he describes his little sister as well. I do think it's really interesting. So one of the reasons The Catcher in the Rye is actually considered a band book is the vocabulary in there, which it swears a ton, which I was not expecting for one, a young adult book, but also two, a 1950s book. Like, I feel like it's slightly scandalous with how much it swears. Quite explicit, again, for like a 1950s book. And then there's also some sorted history about being, catching the right being linked to murders. That's insane. So to put it in perspective, so the book was published in 1951. This is also around the same time period as the Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which was published in 1950. Animal Farm, which was in like 48. Fahrenheit 451, which is like also in the 50s. Like all of those books are considered classics. And Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe also dealt with characters that were the same age. But that is what I was expecting going into this book. And we got a book that would vocabulary wise and language wise and swearing wise fit in today's vernacular. As I was reading it, it reminded me a lot of reading On the Road by Jack Kerouac. And I, I'd have to look up to see when. If you look at the original short stories that Holden was found in, you're looking more at like 10 years. And I feel like a lot of the themes and experiences in Catcher in the Ride, Ride are focused on how to fit into society, whereas On the Road felt more like um, subverting society and leaving society behind. Granted, it is that time period between when they're written makes a big difference, right? Because originally these stories are created during wartime and greatly influences the defining factors of adulthood and what success looks like what the benchmarkers for being a contributing member to society are. So the language is similar to on the road, the kind of fixation on alcohol or sex. Some of these other things are very similar, but I, it's that pre and current war perspective versus post-war perspective that I think influences how the characters behave and react with society. You didn't like On the Road. No. You were not liking, or you did not like Catcher in the Rye. Which one would you prefer of the two? I'd say Catcher in the Rye was easier to read. I remember On the Road, I believe on page like 120, there was a discussion on death and like the sunset and sunrise of life. It's been about two years since I read it and I, I can still kind of almost quote you the page number and where on the page that is. That was the most um, impactful paragraph or two paragraphs of On the Road for me. Whereas The Catcher in the Rye, I think two years down the road from now, I'll have a few more takeaways than just that one paragraph. To like wrap up this entire video, essentially, if you're reading it for fun, props. If you say it's your favorite book, I will not believe you. Uh, I think most of us read it because of school. And in my opinion, there are far better books that are considered classics that I would recommend you read more so than this one. And that has similar concepts and similar themes of coming of age. So stay tuned for that because Amber and I are going to start compiling our list of classic books that we actually recommend because they are actually 
worth it. You might not like it in the moment because I do think like Wuthering Heights will make that list, but not because we liked reading it, but because of what it taught us in the end. So stay tuned for that because that is coming. I do not recommend reading A Catcher in the Rye personally. Yeah, I agree. If you're looking for a young adult novel about feeling like an outcast and not fitting in, there are a lot of other books that do it better and do it in a way that is enjoyable. So you're, you're not feeling like you're pulling teeth trying to get through it. So let us know if you've read the book. Tell us your thoughts in a comment. Maybe we're the outliers and everyone else loves it. But if you are currently reading it, and especially for school, we are sending you all the good wishes to finish it because it's a tough one. If you have any classic books that you would recommend that we try out and read, please let us know also in a comment. Uh, watch another video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you guys next time.